In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have a progress indicator in Adobe Captivate expressed as a whole number percentage. Okay, let's get started here. So this is actually in response to some of the comments that I received on a previous video that I did. That video was about creating a progress indicator as well. But in this case here, it was an indicator that was just simply uh, 1 of 10 or 2 of 20, that sort of thing. And, you know, it works fine, but some people want to express the progress as a percentage. And that's what the comments seem to all seem to point to. So I've come up with a solution. And uh, actually, with the help of one of the uh, viewers, I was able to complete the solution because what I had was an incomplete solution. And you'll see what I mean shortly. So let's get started with the actual project here. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to set some variables for this project. Um, we're going to need two user variables, and we're going to take advantage of some system variables as well, or at least one in particular. So we're going to hit the project drop down menu, and we can actually go straight into advanced actions, because I'll show you a little shortcut here when it comes to dealing with variables. If you know ahead of time that you're going to be working with variables, but you need to also work with advanced actions, there is a variables button right from the advanced actions window. So you can definitely take advantage of that. So let's uh, first of all switch this to a conditional action just so we've got that all set up. And we're going to give this thing a name here. We'll call it progress and indicator. And now it's time to make those variables. So let's click that variable button. And that's opened up on my other window here. So we'll just bring that forward. And the first variable that we're going to need, I'm going to call variable total progress. You can call it what you want, but that's just the name that I've chosen for it. What's going to be stored there is going to be a cumulative total of what slide you're on. So if you're on slide one, it'll be slide one. If you're on slide two, it'll be two, and so on. And the initial value will be zero. If you are working on this project with other users, I recommend that you put in a description so that uh, those other users can see what your thought process was. Uh, since I'm working on this one alone, I'll leave the description off for now. And we'll hit save. And we're going to need one other variable and we're going to keep track of that percentage so i'm just going to paste this in here and it's called variable underscore progress underscore percent it also is going to start off with an initial value of zero and again i don't need a description in this case so we'll hit save so i've got my two variables in place now it's time to build the advanced action so let's begin so with conditional advanced actions, the first thing you need is an if statement. And we're going to actually compare a system variable with one of the variables that we just created. So we're going to ask if the variable cp info current slide, and we can scroll down the rest of the way to find that. There it is. Is it greater than, and we're going to use that variable that we created to keep track of the slide number. And an easy way to find that is just type in VAR and there's all the variables that I've created. And we'll just select total progress. So if the current slide, and this is a number that increments itself automatically when an Adobe Captivate project is run is greater than the number zero in this case, then we're going to do the following actions. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign variable total progress with CP info current slide.
let's scroll down the rest of the way. So let's pause for a moment and just consider what's happening here. The reason I'm doing this and not just simply using CP info current slide is by assigning that variable, that temporary variable with the current slide. If the user goes back to a previous slide, it's going to stay that higher number. So in other words, if I'm on slide one, it will become my variable will become slide one. If I'm on slide two, it'll become slide two or it'll become a value of two and so on. And if I decide to go back to slide one, it's still going to say a value of two because I want it to show the full progress that I've made. Just because I've gone back to look at a previous slide, I don't want to penalize someone for not completing slide two as well. So this will keep it um, always incrementing up and never subtracting from that total. The next thing we need to do is we need to calculate percentage. So this is done through two expressions. So you want to select expression from the drop down list here. And we're going to work with our variable progress percent. And we're going to say equals our total progress divided by another system variable that Adobe Captivate has, and that's CP info slide count. Now slide count just keeps track of the total number of slides that your project has. Now if I have, let's say if I'm on slide one and there's 10 slides, uh, it's going to give me a value of, uh, in this case here, 0.1. So if we want it to represent 10%, right, we need to multiply it by 100. So let's do that now. Math wasn't always my strong suit, but I managed to get by. Sometimes I have to think a couple of different ways before I decide what the best approach is. So we're going to do another expression. We're going to take the previous value of progress percent. So we're going to put that in again. And multiply it by the literal value 100. So that's pretty much it. That's the solution that I came up with. Now I'm going to save this as an action. And I'm going to hit close. And what I'll do is I'll put a text caption right down here in the bottom and we'll put our variable uh, progress percent there so we can display that percentage. And I'm just going to use a transparent caption here. We'll center it and I'll use the uh, insert variable icon from the properties panel. That's the little square brackets with an X in the middle. And I'll select my user variable, in this case here, progress percent. I could put in a maximum length, but it really doesn't matter in this case. And when you're publishing for HTML5, uh, it almost doesn't make an impact. I'll put in four digits or four, four character lengths just to demonstrate why it doesn't matter. We'll click on OK. And because we are expressing it as a percent, I'm going to put the percent symbol just after that. So let's make this a little larger on our screen here. So that looks pretty good, but of course the, uh, the only problem is uh, that we need to make sure that that advanced action is going to run on the on enter of each slide. And we only have one slide, so why don't we just duplicate this a number of times. And I'm purposely going to put in seven slides because I want to illustrate one of the problems with my logic so far. Uh, six and one more. Okay, so 
Uh, it's just a nice odd number of slides here. Let's do a preview of this project in the HTML5 browser. So here's the problem that I face is that the calculation of one seventh is going to show up as a percentage, you know, of 100%. In this case, it's 14.285714285714. Yeah, so that's not too attractive looking if you're trying to design a good looking e learning course. And if I hit next, of course, it, it, it does increment, and that's good. And if I go back, it stays at the higher number, which is exactly what I wanted. But, you know, the end result is it's not too pretty looking. So, you know, I, I put it out to a few people that asked this uh, before, and I want to give credit where credit is due. One of the viewers from my channel, Philip Wood, um, provided a bit of JavaScript that would allow us to keep the percentage to a nice whole number. Philip, uh, by the way, offers web design and web solution services. And you can get in touch with him through his website at philipwoodmedia.co.uk. And I'll have a link down in the description here. So let's take a look at that uh, advanced action again. And we'll just add in a little bit of JavaScript that helps us out here. Thanks to Philip. So I'm going to go down to execute JavaScript. I'm going to open up our script window. And I'm just going to copy and paste what he provided because, of course, it'll take me too long to type it all out. And essentially, um, so I can summarize, I'm no expert when it comes to JavaScript. I want to be very clear about that. But what's happening here is that the, the first line of code there says window.cp API interface. This is an API that Adobe has created specifically for Captivate when working within JavaScript. And this is going to set the variable value to be a whole number. And that's what the next two lines are. Again, I'm not an expert on JavaScript. So I had to take, of course, uh, Philip's word that this would work. And sure enough, it did. So OK, we're going to click. And I'm going to just make sure that it's pointing to the current window. And we'll update our action. Click OK. Click Close. And now we'll preview in the HTML5 in browser. And as you can see, that value looks a lot better. So now we've got 14%, 28%, 42%, 57%, right up to 100%. And of course, if we go back, we don't lose our 100% status. That, that continues. So. Um, hopefully that solution works out well for many of you. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.